I don't know how you guys feel, but after all the turkey and chicken we've had lately, we are ready for some ground beef. So I've got three awesome ground beef recipes for you. We are making a one pot skillet lasagna. It's overall got some really good ingredients in it. I love pasta. Now, obviously, if you're not a pasta fan, this one might not be for you, but I think it's delicious and it's pretty much all over on the stovetop. And bonus, I actually already have cooked ground beef. I made a little bit too much the other day, so we get to just use the ground beef that I made up. This is gonna come together so fast. Like I said, the beef is actually already cooked. We're just gonna do a little reheat on this before we get started. I am gonna add a little bit of oregano. I think that I did add oregano when I actually made this, so I'm not adding too much. I do wanna add just a touch of pepper, and then I also thought that I got out the onion powder. Let me grab that, just a touch. We don't need much. Also, the recipe calls for a pound of ground beef, but this is probably a little less than a pound, so I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. It's gonna be fine. We'll just have a little bit less in there tonight. Now I have my own tomato sauce that I made up and just put in these cans. You don't have to do that, obviously. You can, you can just buy tomato sauce or just add in your favorite marinara or whatever you wanna add in. I'm adding in this whole can here and it's probably, I think these are 10 ounces. I also have a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes. I'm gonna add the whole thing in and we are adding, we're not draining these or anything, just add the can. This recipe is so easy. We need to add two cups of chicken broth. This is bone broth, you guys know I like to use that. All right, two cups. And let me just go ahead and splash myself while I'm at it. And you know what, for the other cup, we're gonna be using beef broth, which is totally fine because we have beef in there anyway. I am out of chicken broth, we need to order that. Okay, we are using bow tie noodles and I have about eight ounces. It might be a little over eight. I just wanted to do a little more noodles since we are a little lower on the beef. And I'm gonna try and do this without splashing myself. Oh, success. Awesome. Stir all of this together. Now we need to bring this up to a simmer so that these noodles can start cooking. So I'm gonna turn my heat up and just let this rock and roll. Now obviously if you do not have some pre-cooked ground beef, you're gonna wanna cook that. You're gonna wanna saute a pound of ground beef and add in things like your uh, minced garlic and your favorite spices so that you get really good flavor here. We've got the boil, so let's turn our heat down. I'm going medium low here. Go ahead and put our lid on and this is gonna cook for about 14, 15 minutes or so until those noodles are nice and tender. Okay, let's take the lid off. Oh man, perfectly cooked noodles. Look at that. Ooh, that is hot. Okay, now we've got to add a couple things. I'm gonna turn my heat all the way off. I'm adding in about two thirds cup of cottage cheese. This is a low fat cottage cheese. You can use no fat if you want, and this is gonna finish this one off. I've also got some freshly shred shredded mozzarella. Let's add in, I don't know, it's probably about a cup. Let's just add in this whole thing. And we'll start to stir all of that together. I think I'm out of parsley, which really stinks because y'all know this would look really pretty with some parsley on it. Okay, let's just cover this, let the cheese melt for just a minute. It's still really hot and then we can start to serve. All right. Give this a try and then serve everybody. Woo! Check out that cheese. Really good. Tastes like lasagna. I think you could even add more cottage cheese, honestly. I'm not sure I did quite two thirds of a cup, but it tastes, it tastes like lasagna, but maybe a skinnier version, sort of, to a degree. Really easy, especially because it was in one pot. I love that. You guys know I love one pot meals. Makes things so easy to clean up after dinner. I love ones that have that pack a punch, really good flavor. This is a great one. Today for dinner, we're gonna be using our crock pot and we are making some slow cooker beef ramen noodles. This is so delicious. Great flavors here, all flavors that we love and enjoy. The first thing that we need to do is get everything prepped and ready so I can put that all into the crock pot. So we are going to shred up a carrot. Now you can buy matchstick carrots already cut and ready to go. 
I always just buy a big five pound bag of carrots because we eat so many of them anyway. And then I just use my cheese shredder and shred these up. So we need about a cup. I'm gonna go ahead and shred extra because we like to have shredded carrots on hand. I'm also going to be using a little bit of a red pepper. So maybe half, maybe a little more than half. We're going to cut this pretty thin. I want it to be about the same thickness as the matchstick carrots. Obviously they don't have to be perfect. You're just going to cut these up and then set those to the side as well. We also need some green onion or some scallion or something like that to add into this recipe. I'm using green onion. Now primarily what's going in the crock pot is going to be the whitish ends and then I'll add a little bit of green, but the majority of the green I'm going to reserve for the end when the meal is done and it'll be for garnish. The more white, those are gonna go into the recipe and get cooked with it. Now that we've got everything already here, ready, prepped, cut, all that kind of stuff, saving these for later for garnish, I'm gonna head over to the stovetop. We need to brown up a pound of ground beef. I'm adding a touch of oil to the pan just to make sure that nothing sticks. This is a pretty lean ground beef, but honestly, it's probably a step that you don't even need to do as long as there's a fat content in your beef. I'm using my mix and chop just to make sure that I break this apart really well. And we are going to add some salt to this. And then another thing that I love to add is some Worcestershire, just a couple of dashes. I don't measure this one, but it probably comes out to around a teaspoon. We're gonna be adding a lot more coconut aminos, but I do like to add some coconut aminos into the beef while it cooks. So if you're using soy sauce instead of coconut aminos, that's completely fine. Again, just a couple dashes. It's probably about a teaspoon and just let those flavors all work together. So we've got our beef cooked. We've got everything prepped over here. I've got my supplies set out. Let's get stuff into the crock pot so we can get this cooking. I've got my ground beef cooked, so we're gonna add all of that here into the crock pot. And we can add in our carrots. Add in the green onion that we cut up. And the red bell pepper. Now you can add as much or as little. If you don't, maybe you don't like carrot or you think that's way too much, that's totally fine. I am a big fan of carrot, so I like to add it in to recipes. I also love the color that it adds. I think that's a big deal. Now again, I'm using coconut aminos in place of soy sauce. About a half cup of coconut aminos is gonna go here into this little mixing bowl. So keep in mind that coconut aminos, I know I've said this before, but I feel like I have to repeat just in case you're new here, coconut aminos is much sweeter than soy sauce. So if you are adding soy sauce to this recipe, you do not need any salt. If you're adding coconut aminos, we're gonna cut down on the sugar. So we are adding brown sugar to this recipe, but oh, this one is hard to get open. I'm gonna add one teaspoon. If you're using soy sauce, I would recommend two teaspoons, but like I said, coconut aminos is sweeter, so you don't need quite as much sweetness. Now, I personally love adding ginger paste or fresh ginger, grated ginger. We love the taste of ginger, so I always add at least a tablespoon. If you feel like that's too much, I get it, add less. And because I made my own bone broth, I'm gonna be measuring it out, but you need about 14 ounces of broth, chicken broth or beef broth, whichever you prefer. Now, don't be alarmed here. Uh, homemade broth is much more gelatinous than the ones that you get in the store. It melts down the same way into a liquid, but some of you might be alarmed when you see that this doesn't look like broth. It's just the gelatinous, which is actually really good for like your hair, skin, nails, all that stuff. So we are adding about 14 ounces. I might need to add a little more to a different bowl because that's gonna be a lot. Okay, just mix together a bit here. You can see it's already just sitting out of the fridge for just a couple minutes. It's not quite as gelatinous. Okay, so that's 10 ounces. We're gonna add another four ounces, but I'm gonna dump this into my crock pot. So that's another four ounces of bone broth 
or like I said, use beef broth, beef stock, chicken stock, whatever it is that you prefer, use that. Okay, now we just stir all of this together. This can go into my, this insert can go into the crock pot. And this is gonna cook on low for four to six hours. Where's my lid? Oh, here we go. And then we're gonna come back and add noodles after that time. Now, this has been cooking for about five hours on low. I just turned it to keep warm. We need to add in the ramen. I only need two packs of ramen, but apparently you can't just buy them in single packs anymore. So I had to get the six pack. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with the other four. Maybe we'll make this recipe again because this stuff is good for about a hundred years, I believe. Oh no, it's only a year. Open your ramen packet and you are going to discard the sodium packet here, like I like to call it. You do not need that. We're going to just use the noodles and we're gonna use two of them. I'm gonna start with two. I might end up adding at least another half. You know what, I think I'm going to. It can't hurt. Put the lid back on. We are gonna stir this occasionally. So I'm going to leave it here for 10 minutes and stir and check the noodles. I'm thinking it's probably gonna take around 20 minutes or so but we're just gonna check at 10 minutes because I don't want them to get soggy. <gasps> I forgot. I was gonna add a touch of red pepper flakes. Let me do that really quick. I actually wanted to do that when I started cooking it and I totally forgot. I just think it would be really good that way. Literally just a touch. And I'll stir that in in just a minute. Okay, this has been about, oh, I took half of it out by the way. I took, so it's two and a half, um, of the noodles that I just felt like it was gonna be too much to leave all three in. So just so you're aware, I definitely think you can do two, but I just wanna make sure that we have plenty. So I'm stirring all of this together. Looks good. And these noodles cooked for about 20 minutes or so, and I think they're a good consistency. So I'm gonna start serving this. Adding in or adding on some green onion for color. Good flavor. Definitely do not need more than one tablespoon of brown sugar. Maybe even if you're doing soy sauce, you might not need that more than one tablespoon of brown sugar. I like this. I think it's a great use of ground beef. If you don't know what to have for dinner tonight, but you have some ground beef ready to go, this is a very unique way of using it. Good flavor all around. I love these type of flavors though. The ginger, the coconut aminos, things like that. I love those kind of things. So I think this is a really good option. Now, traditionally beef and broccoli is made with a skirt or a flank steak or something like that. But we are going budget friendly and we're making it with ground beef. Such a quick weeknight dinner. You guys are gonna love this. I'm telling you, it's like 20 to 30 minutes and you can have this thing on the table ready to go and it's fantastic flavors. Now I'm starting off this recipe by going ahead and prepping everything that I need because everything's gonna happen over on the stove top. I'm prepping out all of the ingredients. I'm gonna cut up my broccoli. We need about three cups of broccoli. You can use frozen broccoli. I don't really suggest it because I don't think that it holds its crunch, which to me is part of what I love about this recipe is the broccoli kind of holding its texture a little bit. I'm just chopping up about three cups of broccoli so that that's gonna be ready to go. Uh, the rice is in the rice maker, it's good to go, but this is gonna take about 20 minutes or so and it's so easy and so good, let's get going. Turning on our heat to about a medium high and I have about a tablespoon of, this is avocado oil, just use what kind of oil you prefer. We'll put that in there, get that heated, and we're gonna start heating up the broccoli. Now, while that's going, I'm going to stir together the ingredients for my sauce that we're making. Okay, so this is one cup of beef bone broth. I'm gonna add in some honey. So about one to two tablespoons. I don't measure this, we just 
pretend that we know exact measurements. This is a fourth cup of soy sauce. You guys know a lot of times I substitute out coconut aminos, but we found a soy sauce that is called a no soy soy sauce. So I'm adding in one fourth cup of that. I know that's kind of random. We just don't do soy. So this is less soy, less sodium soy feet. Gosh, I cannot say that. Less sodium soy free sauce. Okay, so again, one fourth cup of that. Let's add it in. I have about two and a half tablespoons of brown sugar. You can use up to three tablespoons, but you guys know whenever we make things, I don't prefer really, really sweet. Some minced garlic, this is about two cloves. We'll add that in. And we're gonna add in some of this ginger paste. You can just add in uh, great, actual grated ginger if you want to. You could use the dried ginger, it's totally up to you. We love the flavor of ginger, so we are not gonna skip on this. The recipe calls for a half teaspoon. No, I usually add like a tablespoon because we genuinely love the flavor of ginger. We're mixing all that together. Actually, we'll continue to mix, but let's get that broccoli in. The pan is nice and hot now. <laughs> Actually, it's probably overly hot because I forgot about it for a second. It's definitely hot. Whoop, whoop, we lost some. I'm really only gonna cook it for about four to five minutes. I don't want it to get soft. We're just cooking it a little bit. So I'm gonna add in, you know, let's add just a tad of salt and pepper. Obviously our sauce is gonna have a lot of flavor, so I don't wanna add too much, but just a little. All right, we're near done here. We're gonna take this and put it into a bowl, and then I'm gonna cook up the ground beef. I am gonna add just a touch of oil back in. This beef is a pretty la uh, this beef is a pretty lean ground beef. Now, if you have a higher fat content in your beef, then you can just skip that because you probably won't need it. Now, if you are using onions and peppers, which is a great option for this recipe, this is where you would want to add them in right after your beef gets a little bit brown and start cooking those two. I'm gonna be adding in onion powder. And honestly, I would add red bell pepper because I love red bell pepper in this recipe. I thought we had it and we're out of it. So <laughs> obviously we can't add something we don't have. My ground beef is cooked. So we've seasoned it, we've cooked it, we've crumbled it. We are gonna add in that sauce mixture. Make sure it's nice and stirred. And I also have two tablespoons of, what's this called? Cornstarch, we actually have tapioca powder. Two tablespoons of water. We're gonna mix that together so that we can um, thicken this sauce up. And we do need to bring this up to a simmer, up to a little bit of a boil here so that this will help it thicken up. So we're really still on a medium high heat see how this starts to work and then I might crank it up just a smidge. It smells amazing. I knew it would. Okay, it's thickened up really nicely. So we're gonna toss back in the broccoli and just let that reheat. Let's just take a moment and all think about how beautiful this would look with some of that red bell pepper in there, okay? Poor planning on my part. Y'all, this is ready. All we have to do is serve it over rice now. I mean, couldn't be any easier. Okay, let's get a little bite with the rice. Great flavor, so fast, so fast. I mean, maybe 30 minutes actually might be a stretch. I'm talking like a 20 minute meal here. Very, very good, budget friendly for sure delicious. You guys, if you are looking for all those things, try this one. Now, from a personal perspective, you guys know I cut down most recipes that I've seen call for two to three tablespoons of, um, what's it called? Brown sugar. I personally think that even the lesser side of that, maybe like one and a half to two tablespoons, but you know, I prefer savory over sweet. So I would choose less on the sweetness any day. But other than that, so good. But also, 
get you some red bell pepper because how pretty would this look with some red bell pepper? Our verse today comes from number 6, 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you would like more ground beef inspiration, I have a video linked right here that you can watch next. It's gonna give you more ground beef recipes. You guys are gonna love these. I hope you're having a great week.